Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Rocketstock.com. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on getting started using AutoPano Video Pro to stitch 360 videos. Some of you may be familiar with a company called Color, who is known for their stitching software. Their video stitching software is called AutoPano Video Pro, and it's often regarded as the go-to software for stitching professional 360 videos. Today I wanted to show you guys the process of stitching 360 video from a six camera rig, and really how easy and streamlined the process is now. Even if you're brand new to 360 video and are just curious about what goes into the process, hopefully this tutorial will give you some insight and take the intimidation factor out of stitching 360 videos. I know when I was brand new to 360, the stitching aspect of things was kind of what I was always confused about. So let's just jump into it. With 360 video, once the footage is stitched, it's usually going to be in a format that is called ecorectangular, and it looks similar to this. Similar to the way a world map looks because of the sphere shape, folded down to be flat. You can see there's distortion at the top and bottom of the video, which is a telltale sign that this is a 360 degree shot. Now originally this shot consisted of six separate GoPro shots from a 360 camera rig. In this case it was shot with the GoPro Omni. So this is where AutoPano Video Pro comes into play. So let's go ahead and start stitching our footage. Alright, so this is the opening screen we're going to see when we launch AutoPano Video Pro. And it's going to ask you to drag and drop in your video. So I'm just going to open up this folder here and drag and drop in my six GoPro shots. And we can see that has imported in all six of those. And down here, you're going to see this timeline for various settings on our 360 video, and they pertain to different things. And really, for now, we don't really have to worry about this, but this will kind of show different keyframe elements when we do that a little bit later in the tutorial. So for the time being, don't really worry about this area. So if we come up here to the top, you can see we have various settings laid out in order here. And what's great about this is they're all kind of laid out in the order we need to go through all the way down to render. And so this makes the layout really easy to follow. And the first setting you're going to want to go to is going to be the synchronization setting. But in this case, since this was shot on a GoPro Omni, it's one of these 360 camera rigs that is automatically going to sync up all of the cameras at the same time. But if you're using something more like a DIY camera rig that might consist of GoPros that don't necessarily start at the same time, you can use this synchronization feature. And all it is is really just one click and it's automatically going to kind of detect with the audio and visuals to kind of synchronize all of your clips up. But for us, we're going to go ahead and start on the stitch setting. So I'm going to click on the stitch setting here. And you can see we have various stitch settings we can select. So in our case, we're going to be using the GoPro Hero 3 Plus or 4. However, if I click this tab down here, you can see there are numerous different cameras you can select from. And you can also select a lens model if you want to get really specific with that. So I'm just going to leave this on the default GoPro Hero 3 Plus and 4. And then we have another setting here, which is Stitch At. And we can select anywhere in our video and say, OK, stitch at this current position where that is. Or we can select Current Selection. And it'll select five different points on our timeline here. And that's what I typically like doing, especially in this case, which is like an action shot on a zip line. So I prefer to stitch from five different points just to make sure it's more accurate. So once I have that selected, all we really need to do is click Stitch. And Auto Panel Video Pro is going to automatically go through and detect where the different cameras are and stitch them together. So this will take just a second. I'm going to speed this part up. You can see down here at the bottom that is loading. So it's not taking very long to stitch all these shots together. Okay, now the stitching process is wrapping up and it's opened up a real-time preview of all the shots stitched together. And now we can see that real-time preview has appeared. And this is a very common instance of what you're going to see. Typically something like this. It looks kind of distorted. But again, this is our 360 video all stitched together. I'm going to go ahead and close this input video tab now because we don't need to see that anymore. So now we can see what kind of looks like our e-rectangular image. However, the horizon line is not flat. But one of the cool things about Auto Panel Video Pro, it's as simple as just clicking on the image here and dragging it down to where it looks level. So now we can start to see the 360 degree shot here on the zip line as the zip line goes down. If we come all the way over to the other side, you can see this is the back side of the zip line, kind of on the bluff area here. And once we've kind of clicked around here and leveled this out, all we need to do is come over here and click apply, and that'll apply those changes to the shot. And you can see that kind of refresh the horizon timeline down here. So the next thing I would recommend doing is setting kind of your end point and out point for your 360 video. So we can see this entire shot is about a minute and eight seconds long, but I really just want to kind of render out the core of the zip line time. So I'm just going to click down here on the shot and we're going to see as we kind of move forward, I can even move this over here so we can see a little more accurately. Click apply for that. So now we can see the action portion of the zip line has started in our 360 video. So I'm just going to select this red banner here and just set the end point right to where my current time indicator is. And the purple bar is the current selection. Really that, what that affects is any of these settings that we apply. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that to the same points as my in and out. So I'll just come down here to about 40 seconds or so and set my out point. 
and bring the current selection out at 40 as well. So I'm gonna set that back at the beginning. So the next thing we need to do is stabilize this shot. So on this zip line, as I'm going down, obviously it's very difficult to keep the 360 degree rig completely stable at all times. Luckily for us, again, we have a stabilization option. So I'm just gonna click on the stabilization tab up here. And this will compute the stabilization and motion for the entire shot. Now we have a few settings we can adjust here, such as the compensation level, and I can adjust it from full or bring it down if I just wanna do fast motions only. But typically I like to leave it all the way up at full. That way it's essentially just gonna smooth everything out and try to keep the horizon in the same place. So I guess the main difference here would be when it's set on full, like this mountain here in the front, it's gonna try to keep that mountain there in the front. If it's in a lower setting, there might be some actual rotation happening while still kind of keeping the overall shot stable. But I prefer actually for everything to be stable, so I'm just gonna leave that on 100%. The other setting we have here is rolling shutter. If you're using the GoPro Omni, you can enable this, and this will try to reduce the rolling shutter effects that can be common sometimes with GoPro cameras. And so once we have those settings set up, it's as easy as clicking the Compute Motion button. And this again is gonna do a motion analysis on our footage. This will take just a second, and I'll just go ahead and speed this part up to when this finishes. All right, so the stabilization process has finished. And if we come down here to the horizon timeline, you can see kind of all these different peaks and valleys we have down here. And this is really the motion analysis showing how much correction it's actually doing. So where it's at a low point, that was a little amount of correction. Where it's at these higher peaks is where there was a lot of correction. I'll go ahead and play this real quick so we can kind of see what's happening. And we can see overall the video is a lot smoother. You can kind of see these dark areas here. That's one of the cameras facing the sun. So you can kind of see how the rotation is happening right now with the 360 video. So again, obviously we can see this kind of a sunspot camera on one of the cameras here where this is kind of darker and that's probably where the exposure was stopped down a little bit more kind of with the automatic settings on the GoPro as opposed to these other cameras here because this one's facing directly into the sun. And so now we're gonna go to the color tab up here and we're gonna try to help even this out. So we have a few different correction types we can check here. We have exposure, vignetting, color, gradient, and we can also do an auto transition on these colors. So if we just wanna correct it at one point, or if we wanna set it so that it corrects over time. So essentially, throughout the entire video, it will continuously correct to kind of compensate for those colors. In my case, with this particular shot, since everything's pretty similar, I'm not gonna do the actual automatic color harmonization. I'm just gonna do the standard color correction. And in my case here, I actually wanna turn off the exposure because I think the exposure looks pretty good. I just want it to kind of color correct for the shots and get rid of any vignetting that might be happening on our cameras. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click apply. And that's gonna go ahead and run through and compute that correction. And now we can go ahead and see that has updated and we can see that that one camera that was darker now looks correct. And the colors are a little more balanced out because this was kind of shot in one of the flat GoPro profiles. So the next setting is really where Auto Panel Video Pro is gonna shine. That is with the D-Warp setting, it's pretty revolutionary. However, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the blend settings here real quick, just so I can explain to you what these are. So I'm just gonna drag this down so we can see the video a little bit bigger on here. So with the different blend settings, we have sharp and we have smooth, which are the two main ones. We have some advanced settings here, but with sharp, really what this means is that between each camera, it's gonna be a very sharp, hard cutoff between one camera and another. And this will kind of ensure that we don't have as much uh, kind of ghosting happening. But with a smooth blending setting, it will essentially blend smoothly from one camera to the next. And this on its surface sounds pretty good. And this was kind of most commonly used in the beginning of kind of 360 videos because it was a quick solution to kind of make things look correct. However, with fast motion or action, it would give this very kind of ghosting effect around the borders of each camera. So I'll go ahead and turn on the smoothing here just so we can kind of see what this looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And that's gonna update. And I'm gonna play the video so you can kind of see what this effect is like. So if you see here, we kind of have a little bit of ghosting going on. You can see this road here, you can see it twice kind of duplicated and the same effect on some of the trees. And that's because it's blending from one camera to the other, essentially just fading into the other. So I'll come down here to the beginning. I'm just gonna click play. And so you can see like on my arms here, there's kind of some ghosting happening and with some other ghosting that's happening on the terrain down here at the bottom. Now one of the settings is pretty useful when we're looking at the blending settings. If we come down here, you can actually see this setting here, which is gonna be to show the stitch lines. So I'm gonna click that. And this is gonna update and show us kind of where the stitching lines are for each of the cameras. So you can see here, each one of these boxes is one of the cameras. You can see how they're stretched all over the image. If I bring this back to the beginning, we can play this again. We can kind of see the stabilization and stuff like that that has occurred on our footage. So this looks pretty cool. And this gives you a lot better idea of kind of what's happening with the stitching process. So I'm gonna hit stop on that and I'm gonna turn off the display stitching lines. 
So what I really prefer is using the sharp blending settings. So I'm gonna check that back on and click apply. And the reason I really like the sharp settings is because they are compatible with the de-warp feature, which is the feature again that I think is pretty revolutionary with Auto Panel Video Pro. And what the de-warp feature does, essentially on any areas where we might have parallax issues, and what that means really is when things are further away and closer together on a 360 camera, it has a hard time stitching them accurately. So either things closer to the camera or further away will have kind of these stitching errors, kind of like this ghosting effect or kind of a duplicated effect. Really common when somebody passes really close to a camera, you'll just see kind of the stitch lines are a lot more visible. And on cases like in this shot, the zip line might have a lot of errors because this is something that goes all the way through the shot and it's close to the camera here, but over here it's really far away. You can see over here on this mountain area, these aren't quite blending together perfectly. And so what the de-warp feature is gonna do is kind of fix all these small errors like that. So if I go ahead and click on the de-warp feature, we have a couple different settings here. We have prioritize space or prioritize time or still. The prioritize space is the setting I typically like to use, and this is really gonna to try to correct everything in your shot. However, there can be vast differences between one frame and the other because it is essentially looking at the movement of everything in the entire shot. Now the prioritized time is gonna be slower, but it's gonna to try to do everything with a lot more accuracy as far as respecting the coherency of the entire shot. And so essentially what that means is if you have trees or something in the background that maybe didn't stitch up, this is gonna do a better job at kind of aligning those. However, if there's motion moving around, as it says here, those can be less well corrected. And so in my case, where I'm closer to the camera with things kind of moving quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and use the prioritize space. The final setting is the still setting. This is gonna apply the same parallax compensation to everything throughout the entire range of your video, where these other ones are gonna kind of update throughout the video as they go along. And again, I'm just gonna use prioritize space. So now all I need to do is click compute de-warp. So when I click that, it's gonna go ahead and run through that process again. It's automatic. We can see down here as it's loading. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this part up to when this finishes. The de-warp is definitely something that takes the longest amount of time to compute. So really depending on your computer will depend on how long this process takes. All right, now the de-warp effect has finished. We can see that it has corrected a lot of the minor errors that we had kind of on the stitch lines of our 360 video. And what's great is this continues to compute these over time so the corrections are applied throughout the entire video. You can see specifically right here in the hands area where I'm holding the monopod with the camera rig on it. This is typically a very troublesome area and you can see that's really fixed that quite a bit. So I'll just go ahead and click back at the beginning here and kind of preview this again. All right, so now the shot's really starting to come together. Now the next setting we see up here is the stereo option. So I'll go ahead and click that. Now in our case, we're just using monoscopic 360 video and that is essentially where it's not gonna be stereoscopic in 3D. So we don't need to worry about the stereo settings up here. So the next setting we can move on to is the render settings. Now we just need to render out our 360 video. I'm gonna select that. And that's gonna pop up our render options here. Now with the Omni, it actually outputs in 8K if we want it to. So it says our width here is around 8K. However, we have this output type, which is going to limit the actual size we can output. And typically I just output in H.264 because that's what I'm gonna be uploading to something like YouTube. However, you're gonna see up here the maximum size allowed by the output settings is 3840. And under the presets here for our encoding, we can adjust this a little bit here. So right now we're at Ultra HD TV. If I just set this to H.264 4K, you're gonna see that's gonna maximize our output now to 4096. And that's actually what I prefer. So for the standard frames per second down here, I'm just gonna set this as original video. And for the video bit rate, YouTube recommends anywhere between 100,000 or 150,000 kilobits per second. Just because 360 videos, you really don't wanna have any compression or as little compression as possible because the more compression you have, the more instance you're gonna have for a seam line on the back of your video. And again, even though it's a 4K 360 video, the actual visible area when we're looking at it in a VR headset, something more along the lines of DVD quality. So you're gonna to wanna to have as much bit rate as you possibly can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to be 150 for 150,000. And for our audio bit rate, I'm gonna set this to 320 kilobits per second. And now for our audio source, we can select one of these six clips that was on the camera rig. Really in my case here, uh, all of them are gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna leave it on the default first one there. But if you had a specific camera that had better quality audio than another camera, like if you had a mic hooked up to that just one camera in your rig, you would wanna make sure you select that for your audio source. And now for our output down here, I can just select this and name my clip. And that's gonna open up the explore window here and the .kava format here, it's still gonna be an MP4, but this is just the format that exports from Auto Panel Video Pro when you do an MP4. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. And I'll just rename this first part here, Zipline. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now all we need to do is go ahead and click render. 
and that's going to pop up the batch renderer here for Auto Panel Video Pro. And in just a second, we're going to see this render through the progress bar up here at the top. And again, depending on your computer, the size of your shot, and the different settings you have enabled up here, the dewarp setting again can be a little bit slow, but it is worth it in my opinion. And as you can see with this shot here, it's about 16 seconds long for a 4K shot. And it's going to take about 30 minutes to export all this and ensure everything looks correct. Okay, guys, that's the entire process for stitching a basic shot with AutoPano Video Pro. The software has even more features if you really want to fine tune things. But since it's more of a beginner tutorial, I just wanted to cover the basics for now. If you guys are curious what the zipline shot looks like for the final output in 360, I'll have a link for that video on the Rocket Stock blog post of this tutorial as well. Make sure you guys check out the other tutorials that we have on the Rocket Stock blog. We also have great freebies on there you can download. And of course, we have awesome video packs like the new interface pack, which has over 400 HUD video elements. Again, guys, this has been Charles Jager for Rocket Stock. Thanks for watching.